Hey everyone, Steve Malloy here. I was peacefully watching TV this morning when a new segment reported that the Food and Drug Administration was launching a new and undoubtedly junk science field program to label food as healthy. I'll most likely do a video on that when I see the proposal, but in the meantime, check out this clip from that segment where a popular TV doctor scares viewers about trans fats. They're also talking about saturated fats, which you find in your animal products, your meat, your dairy, and they're separating those from your trans fats. That's what you find in your processed foods. We know that those are bad for you. There's no way, shape, or form that that's actually healthy for you. What are trans fats and are they unhealthy? Trans fats are vegetable oils that are processed to be firm at room temperature. Before the FDA banned them in 2018, they were used in vegetable shortening and foods cooked or made with shortening such as pastries, crackers, and fried foods. They had been used in food for over 100 years to help with food texture and shelf stability. Trans fat based vegetable oils were a government recommended substitute for butter and lard amid the 1970s era alarm over saturated fats and heart disease. Had trans fats become controversial? During the 1990s, two Harvard researchers, Walter Willett and Alberto Oshirio, published a series of epidemiologic studies claiming to link consumption of trans fats with heart disease. In 2002, the National Institute of Medicine joined the anti trans fat bandwagon, warning there was no safe level of consumption. But there's actually no credible scientific evidence whatsoever showing that trans fats have anything to do with heart disease. Laboratory studies indicate that blood levels of LDL cholesterol, often referred to as bad cholesterol, increase temporarily after trans fats are consumed. But while chronically elevated LDL may or may not increase the risk of heart disease, the increase in LDL from trans fat consumption is transient, that is temporary. It does not lead to permanently elevated LDL. Importantly, heart disease is a complex, little understood, and multifactorial phenomenon. The relationship between LDL cholesterol and heart disease, if there is one, is not understood as elevated LDL does not reliably predict heart disease. The vast majority of the study of the trans fats involving human populations, that is the epidemiology, have been conducted by Willett and Asherio. Despite their results purporting to link trans fat consumption with heart disease, these studies are not credible. All their claimed results are at best statistical noise as determined by traditional epidemiologic standards. None of the consumption or medical data in any of the studies is reliable. No one knows how much trans fat any study subject consumed or over what period of time. No one knows the cause or nature of any of the heart disease among the study subjects. Without these key data, it is impossible to attribute a heart disease to trans fat consumption with any degree of confidence. Bottom line, the Willett and Asherio studies are all garbage in and garbage out, and that is the basis for the FDA ban. Garbage. Many common notions about diet and heart disease arising from the 1970s have proven to be false or at least more complicated than previously thought. Saturated fat and salt are not the killers they were touted as. Eggs and butter in particular were wrongly demonized. Dietary fiber is not a magic bullet for preventing colon cancer and consider the trans fat relevant example of elevated cholesterol long thought to cause heart disease and death. In the much vaunted Framingham Heart Study, where 5,200 men and women in Framingham, Massachusetts have been extensively studied in over 1,000 published reports since 1948, high cholesterol was not associated with increased heart disease risk after age 47. After age 47, in fact, those whose cholesterol went down had the highest risk of a heart attack. Not only did Willett and Asherio conduct most of the epidemiology studies on trans fats, they all also published many of the reviews of the epidemiology. That is, they reviewed and applauded their own work. This runs against traditional notions of the scientific method where study results are supposed to be replicated and reviewed by other and independent scientists. Finally, the trans fat ban has accomplished nothing to date. There is no evidence that ban has made anyone, anywhere, any healthier or reduced their risk of heart disease. Stay up with the latest in junk science fueled food nanny hysteria. Follow me on X at Junk Science and at my website, junkscience.com. Thanks for watching.